Hello Year 10. So as I said yesterday, tomorrow new content, how exciting. Today we're just going to do a bit of a recap of forming and solving equations, particularly forming and solving equations from like geometry, that means from shapes. So here we are told to find x, so find the value of x and all the lengths are in centimetres. So all we need to do here is we need to think in this, what do we know is the same? And I know that this side here is the same as this side here because it is a rectangle. So I know that 7x minus 3 is the same as 3x plus 9. Now in maths, we don't normally write out is the same as because that's really long and weird, but we've got a symbol that does that for us. That symbol is our equal sign. That means is the same as. So 7x minus 3 is the same as 3x plus 9. That's an equation that needs solving. To solve it, we need to collect all of our x terms onto one side. So I'm going to leave this 7x alone, but I'm going to get rid of this 3x. That means I'm subtracting 3x from both sides. 7x minus 3x is 4x. The numbers, so minus 3, stays unchanged. 3x minus 3x is 0, so it's still 9. The 9 remains unchanged. After that, we add 3 to both sides, giving me 4x is 12, divide by 4, divide by 4. Therefore, x equals 3. Lovely, and that's it. Next type of problem. Now, we can't tackle this problem in exactly the same way. The reason being, although I know this side is 4x minus 1, this side, I don't really know. I could say it's 4x minus 1, but that doesn't help me to solve it. But this time I am told something helpful. I am told the perimeter. Now, perimeter, as we should all know, is all of the outside of the shape added together. So, if we just start with this side here, well, this side is 4x. And then it's got a side, which is 4x minus 1. But it's got four sides in total, doesn't it, my rectangles? Then it's got another side, which is 4x. And another side, which is 4x minus 1. And that is the perimeter. OK, this expression here is the perimeter. And the perimeter is 14. And those two things are the same as each other. So when two things are the same as each other, we put in our equal sign. Now this equation can be solved. So to solve it, we've got 4x, 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 that's 16x. And then minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2, like that. So you get 16x minus 2 equals 14. So 16x equals 16. And so finally, x equals 1. And that's it. Next one might be a teensy tiny bit harder, but barely so. You're going to be absolutely fine with it. So here we've got to find x. It's still the same type of problem. But this time we're given the area. So what I just want you to think about in your head, how do I normally find the area of this shape here? And the answer, how I find the area of this shape here, is I do the base times the height, and then I divide it by 2. That's how I find the area of a triangle. So the base is 5x plus 1. I times that by 6, because that's the height, so I do the base times the height. Then I divide that by 2, and that gives me 48, because that is the area. So now let's just see if we can unpick what's going on here. Now timesing by six and then dividing by two, or six divided by two is three. So this is the same as five x plus one times three equals 48. Then after that, we can do the inverse of timesing by three. So the inverse of timesing by three is dividing by three, leaving me with five x plus one equals oh, 48 divided by 3 is 16. So 5x plus 1 equals 16. 5x equals 15. 
and finally x equals 3. Okay, and that's it. And then the very final one is this. Now this looks a bit harder. Why does this look harder? It looks harder because it's a trapezium. This shape here is a trapezium. I know it's a trapezium because these two sides are parallel and it's a quadrilateral. Now your formula for the area of a trapezium is this. It's half a plus b times the height. Okay. Now this can be A and this can be B. And so we're going to do some algebra to unpick what's going on here. So we know that half times 9x plus 1, which is A, plus 7x plus 1, which is B, times the height, which is oh, 3, equals the area, which is 27. OK, so we've got quite a lot of things going on here. Let's just see if we can unpack things a bit at a time. What I would do, first of all, the opposite of timesing by three is dividing by three. So to kind of undo that timesing by three, we can divide both sides by three. When we divide both sides by three, this is what happens. So this bit here stays un changed. All this happened here, I've done the inverse of times in by 3, 27 divided by 3 is 9. Now after that, let's just simplify my bracket. So half of, well, 9x plus 7x is 16x, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now this, so all this bracket is, you could expand that bracket properly, that would be fine, but this just means half of this bracket. So half of 16x is 8x. Half of 2 is 1. So 8x plus 1 equals 9. We minus our 1. 8x equals 8. And then we, div uh, we divide by 8, leaving me with x equals 1. OK, and that's it. Right, year 10. At this point, what I'd like you to do is have a go at task 1 on the sheet. If all you get completed for this lesson is task one, because you're finding this quite difficult, that's absolutely fine. That's not a problem. Just spend the rest of the hour working through task one. If though, you do a couple of task one and you're like, yeah, this is quite easy. I'm getting the hang of this, getting all right. Please come back to the video, watch the rest of the video, and we'll, I will talk you through how to approach task two. All right, so if you're up to this point, I would expect you to have completed nearly all of task one by now. If you haven't, please go back and do that. Otherwise, this bit might be a bit too much too quickly. So first of all, what makes this harder? This doesn't look any harder, does it? So we are told that the area is 20. OK, fine. Now, to find the area of a rectangle, we do the base times the height. So the base times the height. equals 20. Now, all this is here is an example of expanding double brackets. That's what I'm going to do. So 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x minus 6 is minus 12x, 6 times x is plus 6x, and then 6 times minus 6, a, negative, a positive times a negative is a negative, so that's negative 36, equals 20. Simplifying the left hand side gives 2x squared uh, minus 6x minus 36 equals 20. And that's just from collecting together these two like terms. Now, after that, this is a special type of equation. What type of equation is this? When it's got an x squared in, it is a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations need to be equal to what in order to solve them? They need to be equal to zero. To make it equal to zero, we subtract 20 from both sides, giving me 2x squared minus 6x, uh, minus 36 minus 20 is minus 56 equals zero. Now, at this point, you can't always do this, but sometimes you can. 2 
6 and 56 have a common factor. They all divide by 2. Let's divide everything by 2. When I divide the entire equation by 2, I am left with x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. Now, to solve a quadratic, we want to try and factorise. So to factorise, we're looking for two numbers that times to make negative 28 and add to make negative 3. So those numbers will be 7 and 4. The 7 and 4 is 28. And then because we need it to be minus 3, it's going to be minus 7 plus 4. Equals 0. So after that, we get either x equals negative 4 or we get x equals positive 7. In this case, only one of those solutions can be correct. The only solution that can be correct is x equals 7. x equals 7 because you cannot have a negative number as a length. So x must be a positive number, which is 7. Similarly, then, and a question like this came up in your mock exams. Here we are told the area of this triangle is 18. Now, how in general do we find the area of a triangle? We do the base times the height. And then we halve it, we divide it by 2. And that is the area, so the area is 18. Now, to undo this, this fraction here, we need to times both sides by 2. When I times by 2, we get 2x plus 8. Equals 18 times 2 is 36. After that, we expand out our bracket, giving 6x squared uh, minus 6x plus 24x minus 24 equals 36. We simplify. Uh, minus 6 plus 24 is plus 18. Oh, minus, ah, uh, depends on where, sorry. Minus 24 equals 36. We subtract 36 from both sides to make it equal to 0. Giving 6x squared plus 18x uh, minus 24 minus 36 is minus 60 equals zero. Now everything here divides by six. So let's divide everything here by six, leaving me with x squared plus 3x minus 10. Zero divided by six is still zero. We've got a quadratic. To solve our quadratic, we want to factorise. So this time round, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 10 and add to make three. So those numbers times to make 10 minus 10 add to make three are going to be five and two. And then it's going to be plus five and minus two because that's how we're going to get positive three here. Then after that, either x equals negative five or x equals positive two. And only one of those solutions can be correct. Which of those solutions must be correct? It must be x equals 2 because we cannot have a negative number for a length. Hopefully that will help you to have a go at the rest, at all of task 2 now. Um, the final column of questions is super tricky, so if you're like completely overwhelmed by that, do not panic. I would sort of expect that at this stage. But have a go at task 2. Really, really well done if you've got this far. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.